Germany was late to begin the development of midget submarines. The British, Italians and Japanese had all deployed tiny submarines on operations with varying degrees of success. Japanese Type A midgets had been used to attack shipping in Pearl Harbor, Sydney Harbor in Australia and Diego Suarez in Madagascar, though all the vessels had been lost. The British X-Craft midget submarines had crippled the German battleship Tirpitz in a daring raid on Norway. The German U-boats were progressively defeated by advances in Allied electronic countermeasures and signals intelligence derived from the British cracking of the German Enigma code at Bletchley Park. After defeat in the Battle of the Atlantic in 1943, Germany faced an Allied invasion of continental Europe in the summer of 1944 and wanted small U-boats for operations against Allied invasion shipping and cross-channel supply routes. The answer, of course, appeared to lay in midget submarines. By this stage of the war, full-size U-boats were expensive to produce, required large, well-trained crews, and needed huge amounts of fuel, no longer readily available in Germany. They also had a rather annoying habit of getting sunk. Midget submarines were cheap to make, required few crew, and could sink the same size ships as full-size U-boats. Most importantly, perhaps they could remain undetectable. One of the first German midget submarine designs was created in 1944 and called the Molk, or Salamander. It was a one-man submarine. It was basically an enlarged piloted torpedo with two G7E electric torpedoes slung on each side. Electrically powered, the Molk had a range of 64 kilometers or 35 nautical miles, at 5 knots. 393 boats were delivered to the Kriegsmarine, the first on the 12th of June 1944, less than a week after the D-Day landings. The Molk actually saw combat against the other forgotten D-Day invasion, the Allied landings in southern France, codenamed Operation Dragoon, that took place in August 1944. In September, 12 Molk were sent to attack Allied warships gathered off the invasion area, with 10 being lost. The surviving two Molk was sunk by Allied naval gunfire soon afterwards. More Molk went to the Netherlands in December 1944, operating without success, while from January to April 1945, Molk joined Bieber midget submarines in operations in the Scheldt estuary of Antwerp, losing 70 Molk but managing to sink seven small Allied ships. The Molk was abandoned in favour of the Bieber, or Beaver, a one-man submarine mounting two external torpedoes or mines. Developed in great haste, the first prototype was completed in March 1944. The design was influenced by the British Wellman submarine, an unsuccessful design used by Special Operations Executive, the SOE, but it was shorter. Simply constructed in three sections with a wooden rudder and hydroplanes, it was a difficult submarine to handle. The craft had no compensating or trimming tanks, so staying at periscope depth was virtually impossible. The engine, derived from the Opel Blitz truck, powered the Bieber at the surface, giving off dangerous levels of carbon monoxide that often killed the pilots, as the crewmen were called. 324 of these death trap submarines were built and delivered to the Kriegsmarine, assigned to units of Karverband, a special naval unit operating many secret weapons. The Bieber pilots received just three weeks training before being sent into combat. On the 30th of August 1944, the first Bieber operation was launched against the Normandy beachhead area, which was crammed with vessels supplying the Allied armies fighting ashore. Departing Fecomp Harbour, only 14 out of 22 Biebers managed to even reach the open sea, and of those, just two reached the Normandy beachhead without causing any damage. By December 1944, the Allies had captured the port of Antwerp in the Scheldt estuary. The Kriegsmarine decided to disrupt Allied traffic from their base at Rotterdam. Biebers were dispatched by road to two Ford operating bases at Portershaven and Hellevoetsluis. As the Battle of the Bulge raged in Belgium and Luxembourg, the night of the 22nd to 23rd of December, the Biebers struck. Eighteen set out, one returned. 
they sank one ship, the cargo vessel Allen A. Dale. Between the 23rd and the 25th of December, 14 more Biebers were sent. None survived. The Biebers' biggest success was an own goal. A Bieber accidentally fired a torpedo in a port, sinking 11 other Bieber submarines. Three managed to set out on a mission, but again none returned. Another operation in icy conditions, the night of the 29th to 30th of January 1945, caused the loss of nearly all the remaining Biebers. This terrible state of affairs dragged on until the last operation by fresh Biebers on the 26th of April 1945. Four craft were launched. One ran aground. Three were attacked by P-47 Thunderbolts, with two being sunk. The Germans moved to slightly larger midget submarines. The Hecht, or Pike, was very similar to the British X-Class submarine, two having been captured intact in Norway after the attack on the Tirpitz. The Hecht was a two-man submarine, designed like the British X-Craft to drop huge explosive charges beneath enemy warships. Unlike the British design, the Hecht was smaller and powered solely by an electric motor instead of a diesel and electric units. But this limited endurance just 69 nautical miles, or 128 kilometers, at four knots. It had no hydroplanes or fins, so it could pass through anti-torpedo nets easily. Trim was controlled using adjustable weights, which was an extremely bad idea. Admiral Dernitz also insisted that the Hecht carry a torpedo so that coastal attacks could also be made. The detachable charge, just like the British Wellman submarine, was contained in the nose. The Hecht was designed to operate just below the surface, the commander having a small dome with a periscope for vision and navigation. 53 of these death traps were built between May and August 1944. But even the Kriegsmarine realized that such poor boats would only kill their crews on operations without any effect on the enemy. So they were relegated to training Zehun crews, the best German midget submarine design of the war. The process of trial and error eventually resulted in the Zehund, or Sea Dog, the German name for a seal. It was produced between September 1944 and April 1945, 285 of these excellent units being delivered to the Kriegsmarine out of a thousand planned. A variant of the Hecht, the Type 27 B5 Zehund, was a much improved design that could dive to 45 meters or 148 feet. The commander's periscope could also be used to search the sky for aircraft, a real danger by this stage of the war. The Germans really thought that the Zehund would change their fortunes. On the 31st of December 1944, the first boats were ready. 18 set out from Eimuden in the Netherlands, but nature intervened. A storm sank all but two. The Zehund's first success was recorded in February 1945, when one torpedoed and sank a freighter off Great Yarmouth on the Norfolk coast of England. The Zehun began to perform well. From January to April 1945, 142 sorties were made to the British coast, sinking around 100,000 tons of Allied shipping. The Zehuns seriously worried the Royal Navy. Being so small, the Zehun was virtually invisible to ASDIC sonar searches. The Zehund ran along almost silently, very slowly, so hydrophone detection was nearly impossible. With two G7E torpedoes, the Zehuns packed a powerful punch. But for the Germans, it was a case of too little too late. Though they were sinking ships, not enough of them were hit, and there were too few Zehuns operational to have a drastic effect on Allied supplies crossing to Europe. But the Royal Navy recognized what could have been if the almost undetectable Zehund had entered service earlier in the war. Admiral Sir Charles Little, Commander-in-Chief Portsmouth, commenting, Fortunately for us, these damn things arrived too late in the war to do any damage. Ironically, the last Zehun sorties of the war were mercy missions. After the Allies liberated France, several ports remained in German hands and under siege until the final German surrender in May 1945. On the 28th of April and the 2nd of May 1945, Zehuns ran supplies into besieged Dunkirk in northern France, using special food containers called butter torpedoes. 
they brought out mail on the return trips. After the war, the French Navy had four Zehuns in service until 1953. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.